Hello everyone, today we're continuing our deep dive of Richard Dawkins and Yan Wong's book, The Ancestor's Tale. In this episode, we're going to discuss the biogeography of paleognates, so let's jump right in. Aves is the name of the group that includes all the 9,000 plus living bird species, a group far more abundant than we mammals, though paltry compared to most any arthropod. The first split among the extant Aves is between Paleognathae and Neognathae. Neognathae contains the vast majority of birds, while Paleognathae contains 60 extant species. The 47 tinnimus of Central and South America, the two rheas, of South America, two ostriches in Africa, three cassowaries, and one emu in New Guinea and Australia, and five kiwis in New Zealand. Formerly, there were nine species of large, flightless, and entirely wingless moa in New Zealand, and I do mean truly wingless, in fact they all but lost their shoulder girdle, having only the remnants of the scapula and coracoid fused together. These were famously preyed upon by Hast eagle, the largest eagle that is known to us. Another extinct group were three species of equally flightless elephant birds in Madagascar, who get the tail today. Both the elephant birds and the moa were the largest herbivores on their respective island, and both only became extinct very recently, less than a thousand years ago, driven into extinction shortly after humans arrived on their islands. Although both groups include giants, the elephant birds take the prize for the largest birds to have ever lived. In 2018, a new species was described called Varambe Titan. The genus name was derived from the Malagasy word for big bird. So, yes, the name basically means big bird titan. Indeed, it's estimated that this bird weighed around 800 kilograms, or 1,763 pounds, and reached 3 meters, or nearly 10 feet, in height. However, based on mitochondrial DNA from their eggshells, a paper published last February in Nature concluded... Varambe was not distinct from the previously described species Apiornis maximus, a name that effectively translates to high bird greatest. Not as good as the other name in my opinion, but I can't always get what I want, I guess. You may have noticed an interesting trend with the biogeography of the Paleognates, Central and South America, Africa, New Guinea, Australia, and New Zealand. This seems to speak rather plainly to a Gondwanan distribution but how did the birds get to their respective lands, and when? To explain their biogeography, researchers proposed two potential hypotheses, vicariance and dispersal. The vicariance hypothesis posits that there was once a continuous, or nearly so, population that was split due to tectonic plates. Maybe a single population ranged across South America and Africa while the continents were joined, but the populations gradually changed as the continents drifted apart. The latter hypothesis, dispersal, argues that a population crossed some barrier, like a body of water, to reach new lands. The dispersal hypothesis explains the biogeography of platyrines, lemurs, and xenarthrans, while vicariance explains the biogeography of marsupials. So, which hypothesis best explains the distribution of paleognates? Well, both hypotheses have had their proponents, the inevitable lure of monocausism among theoretical science. The vicariance hypothesis seemed the most obvious at first because almost all known paleognates are flightless. The only exception are the tinnimus, which are not exactly great flyers. Perhaps the common ancestor of extant paleognates was a poor flyer too, so the paleognates simply walked to their various lands while they were all still connected. That must mean, however, that the common ancestor of paleognates lived early in the Cretaceous, since that was the last time all the continents were connected. But this was rejected by such paleoornithologists as Alan Fiducia, because the fossil evidence seemed to indicate that all modern birds, collectively united under the class Aves, originated after the Cretaceous mass extinction. We'll call this the late birds, or LB hypothesis. Cretaceous avifauna seemed to be dominated by Confucius ornithiformes, Enantiornithes, uh, Hesperornithes, and Ichthyornithes, 
with few stem AVs, and once these birds were wiped out by the KT impactor, this allowed crown AVs to radiate. The fossil evidence also seemed to indicate that crown AVs originated in Laurasia, so a Gondwanan distribution of any clades merely reflects relics of a formerly more widespread group. However, geneticists were not totally convinced by the fossil data, and molecular clock calibrations of bird evolution indicated that most orders were present during the Cretaceous. This could be called the early birds, or EB hypothesis. The EB hypothesis argues that the paucity of known Cretaceous crown aves is more due to a lack of bird preservation, or the fact that more late Cretaceous fossil sites are known from the northern hemisphere than the southern. We've talked before about this sort of taphonomic issue with regard to the soft-bodied Ediacaran organisms, so go watch Darwin's Confidence Part 1 if you're interested. So, what has the data shown in the years hence? Well, just like with the origin and radiation of eutherian mammals, the answer is somewhere in the middle. Based on molecular clocks, the split between Paleognathae and Neognathae appears to have occurred about 94 million years ago in the late Cretaceous and a few other splits between extant birds occurred before the KT extinction. However, crown aves did undergo a massive radiation at the start of the Cenozoic. The origin of nearly all bird orders postdates the Cretaceous. Biogeographic and more recent fossil data seem to indicate that Paleognathae and the early diverging Neognath clade Galloanserae, which includes the landfowl and waterfowl, have a Gondwanan origin, but genetics places the origin of both clades long after the continents had split. And then came the resolution of the phylogeny of paleognaths. Based on individual genes, generating a phylogeny had been rather difficult, but with the addition of more genes, the picture came more clearly into view, albeit with some major twists. It turned out that the earlier suggestion of the volant tinnimus being sister to all the other paleognaths was wrong. Tinnimus are one of the deepest divergences within paleognathae. Therefore, there probably wasn't a single loss of flight in the ancestors of all the flightless birds. Some ornithologists have suggested that maybe Tenemus regained flight capabilities. However, this seems unlikely. Flight has been lost in 18 extant bird families and hundreds of times in Rallidae alone. Other than the Tenemus, not a single bird is hypothesized to have regained flight. So the current Paleognath phylogeny looks like this. Ostriches branch first then rias, then kiwis and elephant birds, then cassowaries and emus, and finally moas and tinamus. Quite ironic that the two smallest living groups of paleognates each are closely related to a different and entirely extinct group of giants. There was a hypothesis which proposed that the enormous eggs of the kiwi could be due to its descent from large flightless birds related to the moa living on the same island, and while the kiwi downsized, the tendency to lay very large eggs was simply retained. However, now that kiwis appear to be most closely related to the elephant birds, this idea has been put into question. If the common ancestor of Paleognathae was a small and poorly flying bird, then flight was independently lost at least five times. Once in the common ancestor of ostriches, once in the ancestor of rias, once in the ancestor of kiwis and elephant birds, once in the ancestor of cassowaries and emus, and once in the ancestor of moas. That also means that rather than these birds walking from continent to continent, they instead flew across some barrier, landed, and then became flightless independently, with some of them attaining large to giant sizes independently. This means that the ancestors of the kiwi were probably never very large, and their large eggs are more likely a derived trait rather than something that was inherited from giant ancestors. So, that's the elephant bird's tale. Paleognath biogeography is best explained by the dispersal model, not the vicariance model, and while their split from all other extant birds did occur in the Cretaceous, their orders originated after. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see you all next time.